Hey guys, this is Matt here from morecompleteeffects.com. I'm going to run through a quick tutorial here on um, parenting. And there's a lot more that you can do with it than you might think. As I'm going through my tutorials, I always sort of haphazardly run into shortcuts and stuff that people could use, so I'll just sort of be throwing those in there as we go. Um, actually, there's one right there. If you didn't know in After Effects, any window your mouse is over, you can just press the tilde key, which if you don't know, that's that little symbol underneath the escape key on the left, upper left side of your keyboard. If you just hit tilde on anything, you can see it just full screens whatever window your mouse is over. You don't even have to be clicked on it, so that can be pretty handy. Um, so anyway, there's that. So let's get going. So in my comp here, I just made some solids, so I'm just going to pop a solid in here. So, a lot of times parenting is used, let's go ahead and pull another solid in here, a dark blue one, and a lot of times parenting is used ob in an obvious way in animation to where if I parent this layer to the one beneath it by pick whipping or choosing from the list, the slow way. Um, if I move this guy around, obviously he's not going to affect the blue square but if I move the dark blue square around it's going, going to the other one's going to move with it so this is the most basic use for parenting but we're going to look at some other uses for parenting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this solid about I don't know that many times and what I'm going to do is I call this cascading parenting I don't know if there's a real name for it but tell me a better one so I'm going to pick whip these all down to the one below it. I mean, you could do it to the one above it. It doesn't really matter since they're all the same. And so since they're all parented to the one beneath it, if I press P on my layer for position, if I move this layer, all the layers are going to move with it and we're not going to notice anything. And let's go ahead and make these all 3D layers. and I'm going to go ahead and put in a camera right click new camera make it 20 millimeter so we can see what we're doing really well and so if I select all these at the same time and let's go ahead and go to custom view actually for the three quarter down view or you know what let's just go active camera so if I select all these at the same time and then move in either Z or X that was Y or X you can see that everything sort of moves together so this can be super handy if we just reset this camera this can be super handy if you want to lay stuff out evenly I mean you can see easily how you could just go ding boom you got a grid so it's pretty handy for laying it out so oftentimes I'll parent things like this together cascade them out in depth and you can see that would be difficult to do by hand but uh, and then unparent everything and you know you got a bunch of layers laid out that you can then again move independently but if I leave everything parented also notice that this works with scale as they get bigger as they go back and it's all in a nice even sort of percentage if you will and with rotation you can actually start to get some cool effects so I'm actually going to reset all these oops I guess not let's not do that I don't feel like going through and doing each one so the other thing that you can get with this is rotation and you can start to really get some cool effects you can see how these type of things could be useful for animation. Sort of like a weird haphazard IK chain that doesn't really work that much, but anyway, so you can see how you could get a lot of cool effects with that with uh, with parenting. So I'm gonna take this actually one step further and uh, what I've done is I've in a pre-comp just made a cube as you can see by you know building it up with little solids and inside this comp they're all obviously 3D layers so if I go back to my main comp I'm gonna pull in my pre-comp called cube and drop it in 
If I start to move my camera, obviously it has no effect, and this is why. There's a little button here on your layers that uh, continually rasterizes your pre-comps, and you use this button for more than one thing, but in this case, it's going to respect the 3D space within my pre-comp. So it's going to sort of like bring that 3D world into this 3D world, and now I can orbit this cube as if I was in this pre-comp. So, but the problem you'll notice is that if I select this layer and I want to move it backwards and forwards, I can't. I can move the camera backwards and forwards, but I cannot move the layer backwards and forwards in Z. So what you can do is make it a 3D layer on top of continuously rasterizing the pre-comp. The other thing you might use this button for is if you brought in like an EPS file or something and you have it in a pre-comp and you want to scale it indefinitely as a vector graphic, you would just check this and it will scale it indefinitely as a vector graphic and you won't ever run out of resolution. But that's sort of a side note. So here we go. So if I make this a 3D layer on top of that, now I can move this 3D layer around and you'll see that it does move in Z and respond to the camera correctly but you will get into stacking problems where things will be if you have multiple layers like this and you you know have one thing forward maybe it's farther back in Z but the layer stacked on top it's going to appear on top so you can get a lot of weird effects out of it so you have to sort of use this with uh, in the right situations and deal with the limitations of After Effects while you're using it but so if I take this cube layer I'm going to go ahead and reset it I'm going to reset the camera and use that same principle that we used before and in fact I'm gonna go ahead and put in a light here so that we can see this cube a little bit better uh, that seems fine let's go ahead and move this light backwards a little bit now here's another thing when you're moving this is little navigation and After Effects thing if you're moving these values on a light and it seems like you just gotta keep doing it and doing it and doing it because it's not moving as much as you want if you hold the shift key, it moves a lot faster. And if you hold the Apple key, or I believe it's Alt on a PC, if not, it's Control, you hold it and it's going to move a lot slower. So just moving the dial regular speed, hold shift, you can see it moves much quicker, and find adjustments with Apple or Command key. So I'm going to go ahead and move this backwards in Z up a little bit in Y over in X so we can kind of sort of light the cube and see what's going on. Now, one other quick shortcut in After Effects is if you're working, see so I have the my little uh, gizmo here and I got the outline of my layer and if I click the light I can see the light, if I click the camera I can see the camera. If I don't want to see that stuff, I can hit Apple Shift H and all that stuff goes away. So now I'm just working with what's in there. That will also take away your masks as well if this was on and you had masks visible it will take them away as well. So I'm going to hit Apple Shift H and I'm going to duplicate this cube a couple times and use the same principle as we did before. In fact I might even duplicate it a few more. and make sure that I redo the parenting on those. So once again, if I do the same thing that I did before where I've parented them all cascading down and I start to move these in Z, you can see how this could be quite useful in terms of laying stuff out. But where you really get the cool stuff is, well here, let's string this back out. I'm holding shift so it strings out really well. I'm going to rotate the camera a little bit. Let me move it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use rotation. And we start to get some really cool stuff. So that's the basic gist. Again, scale and everything works the same. But if you start playing with these sort of things, you'll probably you know, come up with some use for it. If not, it's just some good stuff to know about After Effects. A lot of people write tutorials with a specific goal in mind. I feel like there's plenty of those out there and they don't really do you as much good as a tutorial that teaches you a little bit about something you might could use. And 
just some underlying concepts in After Effects. So that's my first tutorial. I hope you guys dig it, and you can find more of my tutorials at morecompleteeffects.com.